हमको लगता है कि आज का जो डिस्कशन है वो काफी फैसिनेटिंग था और डॉक्टर घोष जो बोले कि फॉर द लास्ट थ्री फोर आवर्स जितना एग्रीकल्चर से जाने वो कभी नहीं जाने मैं उस पर एक ज्यादा बात करना चाहूँगा कि वी आर वर्किंग ऑन बिहार इकोनॉमी फॉर द लास्ट थर्टी फोर्टी ईयर वी आर नेवर हैड अ डेडिकेटेड डिस्कशन ऑन एग्रीकल्चर वी आर बिन डिस्कसिंग ऑन पब्लिक फाइनेंस वी आर बिन डिस्कसिंग ऑन वेरियस अदर थिंग्स वी आर बिन डिस्कसिंग ऑन Budget movement. We were discussing on institutional component. We discussed about Sagar. He choreographed the budget movement in Bihar. But we have not discussed about the technical managerial component of it. I think it was a fascinating moment for us. We went to nuts and bolts, and I must congratulate Nikhil Lal. Initiated us to this agenda. We visited and prepared in that visit our office. I would like to mention one of the things because the Professor Pingali will summarize the discussion today, and Mr. Joshi will also pitch in. But I would like to uh, mention here that we can think. Of having a future collaboration with DCI, with uh, Professor Joshi Jain Institute, and RG, we can collaborate on this agenda in a very decisive manner. Bihar has arrived in some sense that we are not talking about institution issues only, but we are talking about the technical aspect of it. This is a very important development. We are talking about diversifications of production. We are talking about nutritional aspects. These were not discussed earlier, so it will be very good that it should be done on a continuing basis. And I can assure that you will have, you will get a good response from the Bihar government. It was just a coincidence that the deputy CM and the Yet the minister was not there because of uh, political compulsions. They were extremely excited about this conference. They had promised to come, but unfortunately they couldn't. But you have seen the response of the Agricultural Development Commission. Not only he inaugurated, but he was here because of some reason the agriculture, principal secretary agriculture, could not come here. So. Here in Patna, we find a tradition that sometimes the chief minister is sitting in the audience, listening to the lecture of the other academics. So the response of the state will be good. The response of RG will be absolutely positive. So we will need the support of Tata uh, Corner Institute and. Uh, so this tripartite can create quite a formidable academic combination in future, and I promise that we will be able to do it in a very decisive manner. Uh, some of our faculty, for example, uh, Somia, uh, Dr. Ghosh, uh, Shashwat, the way they have been working, actually they have been what do you mean next for this conference? I think this uh, effort will continue even in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Professor Pingali. Thank you, Professor Joshi, for a great conference that we had for the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta. Now I would request uh, Dr. P.K. Joshi. Having heard of all the sessions, I would request you to comment and give your comments for the sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I uh, echo what Dr. Saival Gupta sir mentioned that the uh, whole 
policy dialogue was very informative, it was very productive. I think we learned lots of lessons and we shared several studies which have been conducted under the banner of uh, Tarina project. Thanks to Prabhu for your great initiative and uh, leadership on this uh, direction. The three sessions which were initiated were very well planned and the sequence was so well. You know, the first session was on diversifying the food system. Second is integrating in this food system. Basically, I think it was trying to conceive more on crop sector, but second was largely on the livestock sector. And third, most important was on market linkages. In the morning, as I was mentioning, the food system, it has three pillars. We discussed the first pillar of the production. We devoted a lot of time on, we need to diversify the production system. And it was also mentioned that the diversification of production system should be to enhance incomes of the farming community. But they need to produce safe food and healthy food. So that's the production system. And whatever policies and institutional arrangements are needed for this sort of diversification, we need to support that. The most important in the context of Bihar, it is the farmer producers organization. Or bringing farmers together, aggregating them. One for production purposes, as was mentioned in the last session, is developing clusters. Once the cluster approach comes, the there will be more and more supply and then it will attract the traders and the market will develop in that region. The second pillar is on consumption, which is very, very important. I think here we need to think from the food, safe, food security point of view or nutritional security point of view. And different kinds of food safety net or social security program should be developed for that particular purpose. So we need to differentiate between what are the objectives of the farmers, these objectives are increasing incomes. On consumption, we should see that nutritive diet or diversified diet is reaching to the consumer. And the poorest of the poor, we should have social safety net programs. So three things we should separate it out and accordingly we need to develop the roadmap. The farmer producer organizations, uh, it's, a, it's a successful uh, case. I have experienced uh, that many of the farmer producer organizations are doing good business. We had organized a workshop in Pune. I'm very happy to share with you that once farmers are coming together for production and for marketing and for retailing, they are hiring professionals, they are hiring retired professors from agriculture universities to help them what seed they should take, what pesticide they need to do, use, and also where to market, how to market. They used to hire chartered accountants because FPOs are were supposed to give income tax. So they were supposed to they are hiring chartered accountants. Once they are coming together, this is the scenario. But when they are producing alone, so they, nobody uh, talks of the, they, they are very, very poor farmers. So we need to see that in the context of the heart, farmer producer organization should be strengthened. This should be fundamental for the heart. And cluster approach, the, you know, one crop or two crops or three crops in one region should be promoted so that the market is well developed. Third pillar, which we have not much discussed, we have discussed little bit, is the middle one, <coughs> which is between producers and the consumers. And here is the here is my the row, most of the scope. Existing one is inefficient. The middle one is inefficient. Spectrum is unorganized. Now, how we can organize this middle? How we can strengthen this consolidate? There are several examples where main issue is that how to contract your value chains. How you can bring down, now presently the value chains or supply chains are very, very long. Therefore, the farmers are getting, you know, very 
30 percent or 40 percent what consumer is paying. So it's share in whole right, in price is very, very low. So middle is to be seen as how we can. Now farmer producer organizations are there. I am sure that Kosliyan Rai is here. He will agree with me that they are getting full support from the back end. They are getting pesticide, fertilizer, seed from the back end and directly dealing with the dealers. And the front end, the, it's not that big, good demand. Either it is from the retail chains, I think he has already developed, but majority of the farmer producer organization are not able to connect with the retail chain. Because retail chain requires regular supply. Not that today you supply it tomorrow, or you supply after three months. They need regular supply. Or the hospitals, they need regular supply. Or the uh, hostels, they need regular supply. So for that purpose, I propose that, and I am now proposing and advocating, that can we think of federating farmer producer organizations? For example, there is a tomato farmer producer organization. At all India level, there will be federation of the tomato farmer producer organization. So as a, as a retailer, I will contact only federation, and then federation will see that where this farmer producer organization is operating and from where I can deliver the supply. I think this value chain is to be, or the business model is to be evolved in this direction. So we can try some models in Bihar, maybe one or two commodities we can take, and try to see federation of one or two commodities where the supply can be regular to the retail chain. This is one. Second, the smallholder, as was mentioned, cannot participate in warehouse receipts or even in the future trading. So I was thinking that can we draw lessons from the stock scene? As a small investor, I cannot participate in the share market. But as a small investor, I can participate in the mutual funds. And when I am investing in mutual funds, someone is also working for me. A large number of small investors, someone is working for me. Can we think of similar model in agriculture? Is someone in between work for the large number of farmers for potato? Participation in the warehouse receipts, participation in the in the futures market. Can we there will be a different model? A new institutional arrangement is to be think of in these directions. I think we need to draw lessons from the rest of the economy or rest of the world to make our farmers more viable. I really enjoyed the uh, whole day. I enjoyed very much for this workshop. I thank our managers, um, uh, TCI and Akari, and thanks to Nitin for bringing me here. And thank you very much. And I, I again say that I really enjoyed. I am sure that uh, you also have enjoyed the whole proceedings. I am again requesting, I am warning, I mentioned, uh, Prabhu in fact went out that time and that we need to come out with a, a document which gives us how we can make a sustainable food system for better nutrient outcome uh, for Bihar. It should come out immediately where we, we draw lessons based on existing studies and also some of the lessons we learned from the degree of nutrition. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Joshi, for sharing your observations. Now I would request uh, Professor Prabhupada to uh, give the concluding address and guide us with a possible road ahead. Thank you so much. In warehouse receipts, or even in the future study. So I was thinking that can we draw lessons from the stock scene? As a small investor, I cannot participate in the share market, but as a small investor, I can participate in the mutual funds. And when I am investing in mutual funds, someone is also working for me, a large number of small investors, someone is working for me. Can we think of similar model in agriculture? Is someone in between work for the large number of farmers for potato, participation in the warehouse receipts, participation in the in the futures market, can we, there will be a different model. A new institutional arrangement is to be think of in these directions. I think we need to draw lessons from the rest of the economy or rest of the world to make our farmers more viable. 
I really enjoyed the uh, whole day. I enjoyed very much for this workshop. I thank organizers, um, the TCI and Agri, and thanks to Nitin for bringing me here. And thank you very much. And I, I again say that I really enjoyed. I'm sure that uh, you also have enjoyed the whole proceedings. I'm again requesting, I uh, morning I mentioned, uh, Prabhu in fact went out that time, and that we need to come out with a, a document which gives us how we can make a sustainable food system for better nutrient outcome uh, for Bihar. It should come out immediately where we draw lessons based on existing studies and also some of the lessons we learned from the degree of literature. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Joshi, for sharing your observations. Now I would request uh, Professor Prabhupada to uh, give the concluding address and guide us with a possible road ahead. Thank you so much. Economic signals, etc. And also doesn't distort incentives by providing subsidies for one crop versus the other. The Agriculture Production Commissioner today raised a question. He said, should we, instead of a uh, subsidy for one crop, just give a blanket subsidy per acre and let farmers decide what to do? I was sitting next to him and I said, as an economist, I think that's a brilliant idea. And he said, that's true, but the scientists don't agree with that. Because the scientists would like to see one crop or the other being promoted. But that's a debate that needs to be had. But that's why I think more crop neutral policy should come in. Um, on aggregation models, and we, PK has talked a lot about aggregation models, and I think that's an issue that we need to keep working on it. And, and we need to see ways in which we can make them self-sustainable. And you know, there are several good, successful examples of aggregation models that we don't talk about often enough. It's not accidental that uh, Bihar suddenly is a big hybrid maize producer. There was a, an aggregation model there, I don't know what it was, but somehow maize from Bihar was aggregated from the farm level and moved down all the way to Tamil Nadu. It doesn't happen by accident. There was a model there. We need to figure out how that happened. And, and there are other success stories of aggregation models that have come in either through the private sector, through the different value chain systems, etc. But one needs to also figure out ways in which you can have very poor farmers, especially women, women farmers, create aggregation models of their own through the self-help groups, as I mentioned this morning, but there could be other ways of involving them and getting them into the value chain. The trick is always going to be, are they sustainable? I have yet to see a women self-help group that continues to survive when the NGO supporting them moves away. Is that possible? Is it possible for them to create enough managerial skills that they can continue to function as independent units. And if that's possible, then one can see them, see those groups as opportunities for building upon and working beyond that. I think we, we had a fairly interesting discussion of organic versus non-organic agriculture. And, and I think the question is not either or. The question is, they will, there is a market for organic agriculture, and to the extent that that market, that market is viable, one would see a response to that market. Uh, is, is it five percent? Is it growing to, going to grow to twenty percent, etc.? We don't know. But to the extent that you can put in place certain systems for organic produce to be uh, certified and to be marketed then that market will proceed by itself. But organic doesn't mean that other opportunities for agriculture production are disbanded or are seen in, in a different light. The, uh, there are so many different ways in which one can think about agriculture. And one needs to think about complementarities rather than 
looking at competition across all of them. But finally, I think there is a fairly distinct mood of change today uh, that we see here in Bihar and that we are seeing in other parts of the country also. Um, I've been talking about diversification of uh, agriculture for over 10 years now. And when I was first giving talks about diversification of agriculture, most people would react by saying, but from a food security point of view, we need rice and meat. And we cannot sacrifice rice and meat. And obviously that's true. No one is asking for sacrificing rice and meat. Um, intensification of rice and wheat system, increasing productivity of rice and wheat system continues to be important. But the more you can increase the productivity of those crops, the more you're able to release resources to other crops and, and to be able to bring about the diversity that you need in the system. Today, in the, in the discussions today, we didn't hear so much about the fear of losing food security. What we were hearing more about was the realization that diversity has both an income benefit and a nutrition benefit and a food security. That's a big change. So I think we are now in this process of moving forward in, into, what, into a pathway towards a more diverse food system. And uh, we do want to put together uh, some kind of a, a report or a paper pick it, and once we have that together, and we should all work on this jointly, then maybe we can go back to the advocacy, and we can go back to the agriculture minister, and present the results, and see how they can take it forward. Thank you very much, this was a great Thank you so much, Professor Pichai. Thank you so much, Now I would like to request Dr. Nikhil Raj from TCAT Arena. Uh, to give the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita. Uh, when I first started working with uh, Professor Pingali, uh, he deputed me to go to a seminar. And uh, I found there were a lot of people who were working on common issues. And uh, ours was a new program, Tarina. So I went back like a little kid. I said, sir, I think, uh, where do we place our niche? There are so many people who are working. Uh, as a leader, as a guide, as a mentor, he told me, Nikhil, more the merrier, let more flowers bloom. The presence of so many people, a wide range of stakeholders, emerging partnerships is a reflection of more flowers blooming, and it's also a reflection of winds of change. So, I think uh, under your leadership, uh, we will be able to, with all these uh, people here, Dr. Gupta, Dr. Joshi, we will be able to uh, seize the opportunity that is being offered through the winds of change. Let me do a customary job. Uh, uh, I would like to, uh, to begin with, extend my special thanks to uh, Adri, Dr. Gupta, Dr. Ghosh, Shashwat, Dr. Soumya Manjunath, uh, Dr. Barna Ganguly, with whom we have had several rounds of discussions, and it was an initiative that began in the uh, conference room of Adri, and today we are here to share our collective thoughts. Thank you one and all for uh, working together. Uh, I would like to uh, extend my special thanks to the esteemed panelists and chairs, to begin with, uh, Dr. Srivastava, uh, from uh, who chaired the first technical session, uh, Dr. Rang Vijayalakshmi, Principal Secretary, Animal Husbandry, and uh, Professor Ghosh for uh, chairing the session. Thank you very much for your uh, insights, um, and we hope to uh, take forward these insights into a cohesive document, what Professor Pingali was referring to. Uh, to the esteemed panelists, uh, I think uh, the discussions would have uh, benefited if, if uh, we would have had your active intervention and uh, presence. We made an attempt of turning it into a so-called uh, discussion with less of presentation. Uh, 
I'm thankful to each one of you to begin with, Dr. Joshi, uh, 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 Sri Praveen Kishorji, uh, Dr. Avinash Kishore uh, from IFPRI. Thank you very much for your insights and interventions. Uh, to our uh, senior guests uh, from uh, BIAC, who agreed our partner in the TCI, who are, who are working with TCI in implementing the Tarina program in Bihar, in Mogai district. Uh, I would like to extend a special thanks for uh, uh, co-organizing this special session on uh, uh, animal husbandry. I, we have in the midst uh, Dr. Uh, Anup Sinaji. Thank you very much for coordinating it uh, as a team and uh, for your guidance and leadership. Uh, to Dr. D.V. Ramnekar, um, uh, special thanks to you, sir, for having flown in from uh, Maharashtra and having guided us. Uh, Dr. Kevin Pathak, uh, many thanks for your introductions, and we look forward to repeat the same exercise with improvements in Bihar and perhaps in UP as well. And in one now. Dr. Evans, thank you for, very much for accepting our last minute invitation, and we are indeed grateful to you. Um, the uh, panelists of the third session, uh, Avinash has been a person who always bails us out, and as Professor Pingali says, the partnership with IFRI is also historical and is emerging at various levels. Thank you, Avinash, for bailing me out in the other sessions as well. Sashwat, uh, your experience, your expertise from the field as a practitioner and the real life challenges and helping us draw out the various contours of the policy discussions that we were thinking about uh, really helped us. And I'm really thankful to you on behalf of TCI and our team. Sri Sapajit Singh, who has just left, uh, we would like to hear in the coming days also how we can leverage from the Makana experience to uh, expand it to other food groups rather than a given product. Uh, we would like to extend our special thanks to Sri Sapajit Singh. Uh, Dr. Varna Gangani, thank you very much and the extensive uh, work that you uh, do and your team on the economic survey really gave us a useful insights to formulate some of the discussion questions. Thank you for your moderation for the final session. Uh, I would like to uh, take this uh, opportunity also to thank Dr. Anjini Kumar from AFRI who also agreed who is currently on his planned annual leave and he uh, accepted our invitation to moderate the session on animal husbandry. Thank you, Dr. Ajani. Uh, one person who has been uh, just working from behind the screens is my esteemed colleague, Professor Bhaskar Mitra, who is a professor at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, and he uh, leads the TCI initiative in India, has been a source of inspiration and continuous guidance. He, he's like a mirror. Whenever we do some work, we take it to him and he says, ye or karna hai. Sort of, he plays the devil's advocate. Thankful to you, uh, Dr. Bhaskar, for your continued support, encouragement, and keeping us on the guard. Uh, last but not the least, uh, I think the, uh, my team uh, in TCI, uh, special thanks to Andali, who just went through a surgery for his shoulder. And I had to play the uh, Matri Bhumi card to him and say, Ji, tumhe to ana hi hoga, uh, USA. And uh, that's what uh, the son of the soil was here to share his uh, learnings. And he's a budding economist. And uh, thank you, Anjali, for sharing your uh, thoughts and uh, giving us the base presentation. Um, I would also like uh, to thank uh, one of my uh, esteemed colleagues, Dr. Matthew Ibrahim, who is also floating from uh, the US to attend this special session, how do we want to take it carry forward with, uh, in the other areas and in other domains. Mr. Venkatesh Manar, uh, a renowned uh, international uh, nutritionist, thank you for your presence and having found the time to uh, come to this, and we look forward to your continued support and encouragement. Last but not the least, my team sitting there, uh, uh, Ruchira, Nikita, Dheeraj, uh, uh, Naveen Sridhar and Manoj, my colleague who's sitting outside, they too have been burning the midnight oil and I would like to extend my special thanks. It wouldn't have been possible without your support. Thank you very much. Thank you all, one and all, and we look forward to seeing you.